Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. My name is Sergey, and back in July of 1971, I was born in the USSR. Меня зовут Сергей, я родился в Советском Союзе. So today I want to tell you more about Soviet retail and my personal experience as a consumer in the Soviet Union. So a while back I recorded a video called Capitalism Effect on Modern Ukraine, Life Without Socialism Since 1991. In that video I shared my experience of buying a refrigerator in modern Ukraine. So I came to visit my parents and at that time my mother moved out from Kiev and moved back to the village she came from originally. And she needed a refrigerator, so I came and I purchased a refrigerator. If you didn't see that video, you might want to pause uh, this story and watch it, because uh, these two stories are interconnected. So some of my friends on Reddit on Our Communist 101 noticed that video. And uh, there's a guy who says that he claims capitalism has been good for Ukraine using only some rambling anecdote about buying refrigerators evidence. And I know it's probably hopeless to try to convince these guys in anything, even considering the fact that I grew up in the Soviet Union and I know better. Uh, but still, as Nautilus Pompilius said, Кто сказал, что бесполезно биться головой об стенку? Лоб становится твердее. Who said that it's pointless or useless to bump your head against the wall? Eventually, your forehead will become thicker. So today I'm going to tell you a story about my experience back in the Soviet days of buying my film camera Kiev 19, Kiev 19. This camera was a 35mm film camera, so-called SLR type, a single lens reflect. And it was made by Arsenal factory right there in Kiev, in my hometown. And it was manufactured between 1985 and 1994. It was well built, good quality camera and the coolest feature it had a Nikon mount so you could actually use Nikon lenses. Of course in Soviet Union you had no access to those but I don't know how that happened but our camera had a Nikon mount and also it was very expensive 150 rubles. And what was 150 rubles? That's pretty much average salary of the Soviet engineer. So picture an American engineer making, I don't know, 60,000 a year, maybe, let's say, 120,000 a year. So that's $10,000 a month. And his kid wants to buy a camera that's worth his monthly salary. So $5,000 to $10,000, just, just to give you perspective. Despite having tons of family photos, my family actually never owned a camera. It's all because of uh, my uncle, my mother's brother, they always had a camera and they always took pictures when we were together in the village. So all the way till I became a student of Kiev Polytechnical Institute, so this is 1988, and I believe I bought this camera in spring of 1989. So how come that an average uh, Soviet teenager, nerd on top of it, managed to save such a substantial chunk of cash, 150 rubles, and mind you, Back in those days, we didn't have like summer jobs available. There was no, you know, McDonald's or Burger King to work to make extra cash. Well, it was possible because I became a student of the Kiev Polytechnic Institute. And back in the Soviet days, besides education being free, we also uh, were getting stipend. So because I passed my entry test with, was that flying colors expression or flying flags? I scored uh, two excellent and one good, so five, five, and four. I was uh, receiving so-called Pavishana stipendia, so it's like extra large stipends. So instead of normal, I think it was like maybe 35 rubles a month, I was getting 50 rubles a month. So yeah, that's what we had going on in Soviet Union. Besides getting free education, college education, you also were getting paid to study. You were getting stipend. But you need to keep in mind, if you weren't bright enough, smart enough to pass entry tests, you would never get college degree because they won't let you get in. And since I was pretty tight with money, I didn't smoke, I didn't drink almost. 
And, you know, the other expenses were paid by my parents, free housing, free food. I managed to save 150 rubles pretty quick. And since I always wanted to have a camera, as I said, my family never had one, I used for a while my uncle's uh, camera fed. So I asked around, you know, back then there was no Google, no reviews, and people recommended me. Uh, so it, the best camera on the market would be Key of 19, which was, as I mentioned earlier, manufactured right in Kiev on Arsenal factory. So here we had a situation. I had the money. I knew what I want. So pretty much just, you know, in a normal economy, you just go to the store, you buy a camera. Or even if you don't have money, you apply for financing or pull the credit card and you buy the camera. Unfortunately, in Soviet Russia, camera buys you. And here we need to pause for a second and have a Russian language refresher. Actually, it's more like Soviet language refresher. So, урок советского языка. Blood. Blood. And you need to be very careful with this word because it sounds very close to blyad. Blyad, which means whore. But blood means connections, knowing people be able to pull the strings to get goods that you need or services. Blood. If you read uh, Solzhenitsyn Archipelag Gulag, uh, he mentioned this interesting fact that since so many people, and it's like everyone, not just criminals, but intelligentsia, Soviet leaders and average workers went through Gulag system, they got themselves exposed to blatnoy yazyk which is a criminal's language, you know, criminal jargon, a slang, and they brought that uh, language back into the regular life. So blood is actually has its roots to uh, prisons. It's a part of the criminal language. So if my family had blood, had connections, my shopping experience would look like that. Mom, I saved enough money, I wanna buy a camera. I want Kiev 19. And I can't find them in the store. Okay, son. So she calls the number. Hey, cousin. Remember uh, two months ago I helped you to get this uh, furniture from Yugoslavia? Uh, guess what? My son is looking for a camera, Kiev 19. Uh, do you mind to see if you can get it for us? He has the money. No worries about it. And in a day or two, I would get that camera. That's how the blood worked in the Soviet Union. You just need to know the right people. You provide... Uh, help and services, and in return, you get the same. But since my family had no blood, I had to apply a different strategy. I was told that once in a while, uh, those cameras uh, could show up on the shelves in Ukraina Univermag, which is one, one of the biggest, uh, almost like a department stores in Kiev. We had one downtown Kiev on Krishatik uh, called Tsum, Centralny Univermag, Universalny Magazine. Then we had one called Univermag Ukraina, and that one was way closer to my place. So I started my uh, hunt for Red October, but there was a hunt for Kiev 19 camera. So every day uh, after down this college, my Kiev Polytechnical Institute, I'll hop on the tramway, but instead of going home, I'll go in the opposite direction and go into Univermag Ukraina, where I just check the electronics department, just in case, maybe they have cameras, and then I'll check uh, music department for new LPs, then I go home. And that was going on probably for about two or three months. So that was a Soviet consumer reality. If you don't have blood, you just feel like a little bitch. Um, apologize for my language. No one cared about your money. Hey, I have 150 rubles. I would like to buy a camera. Too bad. <laughs> There's no cameras. You need to know people or you just need to get lucky. That's why my old video about experience of buying a refrigerator and after Soviet Union Ukraine, I felt so amazing because I finally experienced the power of money. You know, I before I couldn't buy anything even if I had money. Now, just because I have money, people um, are ready to sell, they're ready to deliver same day, and it felt amazing because I knew better. I used to be Soviet consumer without blood and, you know, you're running to the stores trying to buy anything and you can't find anything. And finally it's changed and it felt amazing. So there's another uh, difference between 
Western consumer or Soviet consumer. Western consumer is upset because he doesn't have enough money to buy all this amazing selection of goods, all these luxury items, Gucci, Dolce, Cabanas, and everything else, right? So you're upset because you don't have money to purchase the goods. In Soviet Russia, you're upset because you have the money, but then you, there's no goods to purchase. You know, still, it was super expensive too, right? And then one time in May, I once again popped at the Univermag Ukraina and I see a long line in a photo department. So they have a separate small area when they sell, you know, film, uh, all the development chemicals and cameras if they had cameras and also photo paper. So I asked the people like, hey, what's going on? They said like, hey, Kiev 19 just выбросили. And as another instant, um, I already talked about it before, this expression was thrown out. So if there's something pops on the shelves that usually is not there, it's being called, it's being thrown out. <laughs> but you still have to buy it. It wasn't like thrown away. So finally, my dreams came true. But I didn't have money on me. It would be really crazy to carry 150 rubles in your pocket every single day because once in a while we had uh, pocket pickers in um, public transportation and I had to take bus or tramway daily. So I kept money at home, of course. So there's the situation. I'm at Dunyurmag Ukraina. I see the camera I want, but I don't have the money. So I look at the long line and I looked how many cameras roughly they had on the shelves. And I had a short prayer to Soviet Jesus, to Comrade Lenin, that they will still have cameras when I come back. And I ran uh, to the tramway station, hopped on a train. I'm a train. And it takes about half an hour to get from Unyarmag Ukraina to my place where I live. Then I ran all the way to my apartment building, grabbed the money, ran back. So it took me probably over an hour to make this round trip. And I got into the line, uh, started waiting for my turn to purchase the camera. Then I spent another hour or so in line waiting for my turn to buy a camera. And it took so long because back in the Soviet Union, you don't just grab a camera and you go or same with like if you buy TV or any other expensive electronics, you're actually asking to check it because quality wasn't that great. It's quite often brand new item would be, wouldn't be working properly or some parts would be missing. So a salesperson had to open every box with the camera, pull the camera out, inspect the lens, you know, they'll pop the lens off, they'll look inside, they'll rewind the film, and there's no film, but remind the mechanism, make sure that works good. So every camera uh, to sell would take probably close to 15 minutes at least. So it took forever to get my turn. And I was super lucky because it literally had like three cameras left after I bought mine. And what I remember uh, when I, you know, got my camera, a guy behind me wasn't happy with his lens. Uh, he said there was some tiny air bubble in the glass. But of course, sell person like, well, then you take it or you just walk away without camera. So this guy, I guess he was a professional photographer or something. He was turned to me and said, hey, dude, do you mind to swap? Because you probably bought your camera to resell anyway. So think about it. This is understanding you buying this deficit item just to turn around and resell for more money. So he's like, let's swap because I need it for my work and you just bought it to resell. And I told him proudly, nope, I bought it for myself. And that camera served me well. I took it to the village. I took a bunch of black and white photos and slides. Um, he went with me to Germany. He went with me four times to the United States. All my pictures from my adventures um, in 1995, 1998, working in the summer camp and working on the farm, everything, all those pictures were taken with Kiev 19. And I could tell right away how better quality was of my pictures versus my foreign friends from Australia or England. They all use those cheap plastic cameras. My pictures dominated. They were clear, great focus, great lighting. Everything looked fantastic. And that Kiev 19 camera served me well for many years. It began having little problems in the end. The shutter screen wasn't moving fast enough. It was like getting stuck. So in some pictures, I had a dark line on the top of my photos. Uh, so in the end, I left that camera in Kiev, and my brother um, ended up selling it for 50 grivnas when it totally quit working. And 
I wasn't happy about it because that's like, you know, memories of my childhood or teenage years and all my trips over that camera. I would just keep it even in not working condition as a souvenir, but unfortunately it's gone. But I probably one day will buy another one just uh, as a collection item. So those were the realities of life of the Soviet consumer. Uh, despite the fact that uh, housing was heavily subsidized, some basic food staples were heavily subsidized, salaries were really low, and most uh, durable goods like cameras, electronics, TVs, cars, shoes, clothing was really expensive if you look at uh, what we were making, earning every month. And besides it was expensive, it was also really hard to purchase. Sometimes near impossible if you don't have the right connections, if you don't have blood. So that's what I was trying to uh, tell you guys in my previous video about experiences in modern Ukraine. It just felt different and it felt great to be on the top as a consumer, not on the bottom. Well, that's all I have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget like. I always enjoy reading your comments. And if you read my book, please don't forget to go on Amazon.com and post feedback. I really would like to get to 100 feedbacks. Right now I have only 89. Thank you so much. До свидания. Goodbye. to have a signed copy thank you and if you love my channel and would like to show your support please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka show for as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union